Hello and welcome to Big Picture Monday. My name is Callie Black here with all the context you need to totally rock this week's Come Follow Me readings. This week we are finishing up the book of 2 Nephi with chapters 31 through 33. So just three little chapters at the end of 2 Nephi. So much good stuff. And it's also the final words that we get from Nephi. We have been reading from his exact words. I mean, sure, he quotes Isaiah and Jacob a few times, but from his words for the past three months. And this is the end. These are the last things that he's writing. And I actually think it's very significant to look at what people write in the scriptures as their last words. Now, sometimes they don't know what's their last words, so that doesn't matter. But a lot of times, and Nephi seems to understand, like, he's getting old. He's getting ready to pass the plates on, right? Um, and he knows this is the last thing that he's going to write. And so what does he choose to write? I think that is so important to focus on as we finish up these last three chapters that are just, like, packed with so much good stuff, so much doctrine, like, pure doctrine, which, of course, is amazing, thinking about why Nephi chose to include these things at the end. Now, speaking of endings, we're at the end of quarter one, which means your big picture little picture study guide for quarter two is available now, April through May and June. April through June, you guys. I know a lot of you love big picture little picture study guides. Go get it. You can get it on my website uh, as a digital download, comefollowmestudy.com, or you can get it as a physical book shipped to you from Amazon. But if you have never gotten my study guide before, this quarter might be the one you want to get it for because the book of Mosiah is insane. It's amazing. I love it. But we've got flashbacks and flash forwards and we've got intersecting timelines and three timelines to follow at the same exact time. And there's like so much. And like, remember this person because we're going to talk about him 300 pages from now. And remember the, this civilization. They, there's so much. And I love teaching it. I love getting it all organized. And oh, look at that fun connection here. And remember this person because pay attention here. I love doing that. And I love writing it down. I love making these weekly videos for you guys as well. But in my big picture, little picture study guides, I write this all down in much more detail. And I remind you every single week who the important people are, who the important places are. You have an amazing map from Olivet Designs that has all the Book of Mormon locations. You kind of see there's a lot more traveling in the Book of Mosiah. And we even start the first part of Alma. We also have all those small books, which there's so much, so much time that happens in those. It's fun. I love it. And I want to help you out. Um, there's also seven spiritual guiding questions every single week because it's cool to understand this all factually, but the point of it is to then apply it to your life and have some spiritual change come from what you understand. So grab it now. Don't wait because next week is actually Easter week and I do not do Big Picture Monday for Easter week. I don't create any like come follow me content for Easter or Christmas weeks because there's so many other people, the church itself and so many other people have great resources for those weeks. It's kind of like my week off. <laughs> um, so you will actually need that second quarter study guide two weeks from now. So you've got two weeks to get all settled. You're good to go, but don't forget about it because next week we're going to get wrapped up in all the amazing Holy Week stuff. I love it. And then it's literally the day after Easter. The second quarter starts. That's April 1st is the day after Easter. And I don't want you to get caught off guard. Um, so order it now so you don't have to worry about it. Um, okay, let's talk about it. Let's dive in. Um, as I said, we're looking at what Nephi wrote at the end of his life, which is always important to keep in mind. Okay, let's review the plates. Quick quiz question. What plates is Nephi writing in? right now. Where are we reading 2 Nephi from? The correct answer is the small plates of Nephi. If you said that, nicely done. If not, let me remind you that Nephi, as he has settled in the land of Nephi, has been commanded by the Lord to make a large plate and on that to inscribe everything that's going on, the history of his people, right? The narration of everything that's going on around him. And then the Lord asks him to make a smaller set of plates and in there to only write the things of spiritual importance, the things that would point people towards Jesus Christ. And so that's what we're reading right now. That's what first and second Nephi have been written on. It was not like a journal that Nephi was keeping as he journeyed through Jerusalem and across the sea, right? This is all as he's an older man in the land of Nephi. He's not the king, but he's the 
the ruler there in the, the land, the political ruler and the spiritual ruler all in one. You can call him a prophet leader. Um, he's got the big plates, he's got the small plates, and he's keeping them separate. And what we've been reading is the small plates. But I want you to just keep that in mind because although we are going to stick with the small plates for a little bit longer, next quarter things are going to start to change. So we're going to come back to those large plates. So just keep it in mind. We're in small plates, but you know that the large plates exist. You know that they're there. And you also know that the, the Nephites have the brass plates. They're not adding to those. Those brass plates are the ones they took from Laban, right? That's like their, their scriptures, their Old Testament. That's how he can quote Isaiah and other Old Testament prophets that he'll continue to quote, um, that other people will continue to quote, quote throughout the Book of Mormon. Um, so they're not adding to the brass plates. That's their scriptures. But then we have the large plates and the small plates of Nephi, as they're called, that are being passed down from person to person. Okay, last thing I want to point out is that in these chapters, Nephi is going to talk all about, I mentioned doctrine, but specifically he's going to talk about the doctrine of Christ. And I want to make sure we're on the same page for this because sometimes we have these words or phrases that we say at church and you're like, okay, wait, did I actually ever learn what that really means? <laughs> um, the doctrine of Christ is just kind of a way to sum up the steps that Jesus showed us we need to take if we want to live with him again someday to be exalted, right? So these are the steps. Jesus showed the way. He lived his own doctrine. He lived the doctrine of Christ. Um, the doctrine of Christ, technically, we, we separate it into five different steps. You should know the first four very well from an article of faith. We start off with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ repentance, baptism, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then the fifth one is endure to the end, which encompasses everything you do afterwards. So Jesus lived that as an example. And then this, this is what everything we do is based around, is around those five steps. Like seriously, all of it can be tied back to it. And in fact, this week, a cool challenge to do would be as you read every verse, every verse, think about which one of the five steps of the doctrine of Christ Nephi is focusing on for that one. Cause he keeps like talking and expounding on different ones and then giving the example of this. And it like, it's pretty cool. He's just, he's just talking about doctrine. So see if you can kind of sort it into the five categories. That would be a fun little activity to try. Okay. Let's talk about what's in these three. Can't believe there's only three chapters, but love it. Uh, three chapters at the end of Second Nephi, chapter 31. Here we go. Nephi starts by saying that he wants to teach very plainly now about the doctrine of Christ. Look at that. We're ready to go. We're already primed. Here we go. Um, Nephi then teaches why Jesus Christ is going to be baptized. Remember, Jesus hasn't lived yet. So why, what's the purpose of Jesus being baptized? What's the purpose of Jesus receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost? And then what that means for us as an example, what we can do because of that. Um, Christ teaches us that we must be baptized and then we must endure to the end. And so we need to continue with faith in order to be saved with him in his kingdom. Okay, chapter 32, uh, Nephi teaches us that angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at that. He's expounding on that fourth step there of the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how angels speak is through that gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift is so important. If we want to understand what God is saying, we have to seek and ask and request the Holy Ghost to teach us. We should be praying always and that God will bless us in all that we do if we are praying and being faithful. And finally, in chapter 33, Nephi prays, I love this, he prays that his weak words will be made strong so that the people who read these words will be able to have testimonies of Jesus Christ. His weak little words that he writes, he prays that they will be enough to influence us. Jesus, uh, Nephi glories in Jesus. Nephi shares that he has charity for everyone. The Lord has charity for everyone. And he asks everyone reading his words to believe what he said about Jesus Christ. That's what Nephi wants. And Nephi closes by saying that his words will be a witness for him when he is at the judgment bar of Christ. 
And that's it. That's the end of what we get to hear from Nephi. I just think it is so fascinating and a little heartbreaking, but also very eye-opening at how inadequate Nephi felt his writing was. We've seen that multiple times now where he says that he's not a great writer and he's now praying that God can do something with the words that he writes. And I can almost guarantee that everyone watching this video has been touched or maybe even had their life changed dramatically by something that Nephi wrote. And I just love that as an example. Like God can take anything that we give and make it more than enough. More than enough. No matter how inadequate we feel, even if we're right. I don't think Nephi was a poor writer in the first place. So I think he, he was a little down on himself. But even if he was a poor writer, right? The Lord can make it more than enough when, he get, when we give him what we're able to give. I just think it's so profound. Hey, it's your turn. Go read the scriptures. Go have your pen or pencil ready to go as you read or your finger ready if you're reading on your phone. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to just underline words or phrases that stand out to me. And that's it. And I do like to try and censor myself a little bit instead of like, these five verses are all amazing. I'm going to underline all of them. Because to me, it's like, if you underline everything, then what's really the point? And so I like to force myself and think, okay, I love these five verses, but what phrases do I really like? Or what's the word that stands out to me from that sentence? And just underlining that word and then even just thinking about that word or that phrase for a minute, that has led to some pretty cool experiences. Okay, um, I do have a personal focus question. I feel like I've shared a lot of other uh, more spiritual thoughts this week, but um, I want to think about what it means to endure to the end. I've heard a lot of people, you know, the word endure doesn't always have the most positive connotations. Um, and I've heard of people, you know, using other words like uh, enjoy to the end, all, all sorts of different ways that you can kind of reinterpret that. But I want to think, um, what does that actually look like? What are some steps within enduring to the end that I've encountered and that I feel like maybe are the next steps for me. So just kind of pondering on what that looks like. Okay, have a great week this week. Have a great Easter week next week. I hope you are immersed in teachings about Jesus Christ next week as we study the last week of his life and then we celebrate the most important holiday, Easter Sunday. And then I will be back with you two weeks from now as we start the book of Jacob. Don't forget to grab those study guides now so you don't forget about it. Have a great couple weeks and happy studying.